hero has been somewhat figured out. People have learned to Five play around. Five seconds remaining. Flesh heap. When it first came out, you're like, okay, this is a punch. We can kill him fast. Suddenly, he uses the flesh heap and everything dies. So people have learned how to, uh, how to keep their distance. Also, punch doesn't like playing. Yeah. If you haven't, if you haven't used your, uh, your flesh heap and you get bushwhacked, you are going to lose a massive amount. That is one thing that he... Yeah, he does get softened up nicely, doesn't he? Like, how does it actually work? If you get sharpshooted, uh, so you're broken, you don't actually get the passive, but if you still click the active, are you still blocking damage? Or are you not doing anything? Okay, so you still do. It doesn't do it. pretty much the break itself doesn't do anything to the pudge apart mm -hmm. from stacks. If people die. Yeah, all right. He's not gonna okay. All right. That yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. So he will uh, not feel super squishy, but he will take a huge amount of damage yeah. nevertheless. You are you're correct. Thankfully, I have you here with me, so I can ask all the dumb questions. I'm, I'm so are so I sometimes I have to check those and I really like knowing but uh, it actually helps you sometimes in play. But, uh, when when so many things have been added at once stuff I haven't been able to catch up now radiant to team know. pick so thank you Fanatics, thank you turn pick. What's your way? of course of course uh, I mean sometimes I think in in the dota universe I think we're maybe a bit uh elitist in a way that we only ask the the most difficult the most hardest to interpret questions and get like oh that's interesting but did i actually learn or like did i understand what uh how, how this thing actually works so you hear it you forget it in a minute because then there's like oh okay so i think sometimes it is good to just go back to the roots go back to the basics you know uh, figure out like remain. these simple interactions how do they work how do they bounce you know stuff like that um seconds we're remaining. we're trying to be newbie friendly too from time to time uh pango and the lion well pango kind of sits in nicely here in in terms of marcy can't do much to the pango despite if you're bkb and then you're throwing your punches with your unleash like that's that's one thing but it will at least disarm uh the marcy from dealing damage which is well, good for one thing you are a vision providing hero for the hoodwink and you have magic immunity Ten when naga remaining. also has song so you have some kind of synergy going on with these two five i'm seconds looking at the, at the lineup of fanatic and i'm thinking or a there if you play a carry naga here you're gonna lose it's kind of delicious is a me naga player laning phase you're gonna get crushed. Early mid game, you're gonna get crushed. Late game, Lion is gonna make your illusions not do anything. This is not a carry knife. You have to switch. I think it's it's just not gonna work. So uh, Neon Atomic, they have... it's just way too big of a. Yeah, I mean, since we have a North American expert uh, sitting around the channel, we got Neff. I mean, he probably approves the North American teams in TI going for this offlane Naga Siren where they try to bait out the one or two picks potentially. Was purely designed as a hero to bait one or two heroes to be uh, picked and then still put into the offlane. But that was that was mainly because Toby had to play the lane uh, which is going to have the worst result, most likely. Uh, but it, it did work from one game to another, but it didn't work for the majority of the time. Plus, I guess, a uh, bit of difficulties here and there for the team in general. But um, one thing that I'm looking at is the Marcy and the LC. Obviously, I like Marcy as a support and LC as your offlaner, the standard stuff. But there was another North American player. Sorry, we're doing SCA, but I will quote North America here. I saw one of the wildest support drafts two years ago where they had POS4 Sniper, POS5 LC, and that was Albi2000 who actually, I think, uh, played that, uh, that LC as a POS5 support. So you could technically put an offlane Marcy in this game, support with the LC, and have the heart to spell. That's, uh, that's maybe if, if the Naga Siren is carried the cell. 10 seconds remaining. Is a direct counter to. Overall, I, currently in the meta, remaining. I don't see that. 
There was a point Fanatics where the elf turn pretty to good on, on the support role. Pretty much a, lo a lot of people. But now it's... it's and it's actually yeah. really good in this game in particular because you have so many good heroes that you can pull off of. Plus you have the line with the... Ten seconds but I, I would see KP play this hero much 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 more Five than if they put it on the support role um although i'm not sure if kp would like to play marcy i guess he could uh, i don't think it requires that much uh, uh rocket science brain work to make the offlane marcy work but uh lc probably a much st much stronger here plus uh, we got to see some cool stuff was it was it yesterday when we saw the overwhelming odds uh level 10 radius talent yep. into the level 15 hero damage and that lc just popped off in this game, that would make much more sense to me than in that game. And in that game, it popped off here against the Naga Siren Illusions. It would just obliterate. Yeah. Especially the poor Hoodwink. And they wouldn't get one-shotted, but they'll get very, very... I I'm curious to see how KP is going to... seconds remaining. ...that route, or is he going to... Five yeah. seconds remaining. Lich is a classic uh, interaction-wise against the LC duel target. Yep. Single target on single target. Simple maths. But into the last phase, Mars and Tusk. I was actually surprised Tusk has gone uh, through the pool this far and actually banned Fanatics in the last phase. Turn to pick. The puck as well. What does Fnatic, what does Armel want to play if he doesn't play the pudge? Radiant um, team pick. He's gonna get some. Shadow feed. Do you need four that is going to be able to help the LC? SF falls into that category, but you also <coughs> are protecting your the possibility of punch fall behind and you not. This is another the Naga Five plus it allows remaining. flexibility for the Fanatic because both the Pudge and the SF can go to the. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Gabby has played the Shadow Fiend twice. So it was against Xerxia and against the Lil Gun. Most likely he's going to be the one to play it as well. But this punch for the first time, uh, I'm excited to see what it can come up with. Uh, we have an OD to follow things through. Um, only one in Tiro on the side of Fnatic. So this OD can be deadly. And it's JG to play it as well. So I guess now you send the S. To be that does make a lot overall, but yeah, and yeah, probably. Can Gabby Putch? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I just can't see Neon. I don't know what needs to happen for this time, and OD is great, but how do you take down towers? The OD is great at killing the Pudge. He's not really great when people jump on him, and that's really happening with, him. especially when you have an SF in the. This is just scary for, from my angle. Punch, very strong run, one versus one. Legion Commander will crush the Naga Siren one versus one. The supports are gonna be full, pulling the supports towards the mid lane, where it's debatable who actually has an edge. Probably the SF, just because of the damage output. Six. I mean, I'm, I'm heavily favoring Fnatic and. What about chat? What do you guys think? Is Fnatic going to be a uh, sole victor here? Type 7. If you think Fnatic's going to win this one. I can see Neon Atomic's lineup work in team fights, but I agree with you. Uh, Objective-based gaming is going to be difficult. Taking down towers, you need multiple hero kills against a very experienced team um, to be able to hit objectives, taking down towers. Naga, as we've seen... Builds into a, a lot of stats, a lot of HP early on, and kind of lacks on the damage department, except for the Riptide, which, which is creating a not good against objectives because it doesn't do shit. So uh, this is <clears throat> this is a challenge for Atomic, but Prepare they have they have been able to take a lot of ties from a lot of teams. Sometimes game one, sometimes game twos, and I believe this is uh, this is the great. A place to show if you're up to match up against a team like Fnatic. You would here, you feel like you can beat anybody. Yeah, especially in this. I'm not sure with the OD, are they going to be going for a Meteor Hammer or not? I would actually be okay with it. 
Because getting the tier ones down is going to be of the utmost. Fnatic going for. They did this in, in game one. Yeah. Without really the one. Very though. Inter Break the smoke and also. Is Hate it though. Hate it coming from a different angle here and actually catch a glimpse of him here. But they're going to go for Seri. Seri though, he's going to be safe here. They place down the ward. They're cutting down trees as well, making a secondary juke path. Janual checking if there's a ward. There isn't one, at least on that side. Ops ward only cuts an edge over here. So uh, if Janual actually stepped one step further and got hit by the tower, he would have maybe gotten the information about the, the ward and potentially put it in the wrong spot. But uh, doesn't cross the line. Gets a bit lucky there. Well, yeah, but un unlucky for him, let's put it that way. Though the support players have gotten really good at understanding where the ward is attacking them. They move a couple of more steps and then they know where the place is actually where it's going to see the If the tower had hit him, there uh, there also is a chance that the fanatic find spot. We'll find one ward, but he's probably not expecting a second one to be there. Jay's giving full vision into mid. We're gonna watch this Shadow Fiend versus OD matchup. Armel versus JG. SF starting off with the raises. Classic. This time we saw, I think we <clears throat> seen some of one or two of the SFs. Was it was it Ken or was it somebody else where they uh, kind of double downed on the high ground um, uh, high ground raises? suspecting that the enemy is going to be there and they weren't and actually cost them a lot of mana because they weren't able to deal any damage this time he had three stacks on the od i think it was good. yeah i mean that's the way that you play the sf the only reason why that happened to to ken on the sf is because that time is more than the middle no vision armel sees that it's not going to be good cool. Yeah, good old blind raises as well. Yeah, yeah. Delicious, uh with this Naga versus the LC. Most likely going to be seeing overwhelming odds going to be maxed out. KP probably seen one or two games here in the Pro Series where they uh, have seen this uh, LC Q. And obviously it is the smartest choice against these illusions as well. It's, it is fun to see KP still play Dota, you know? He's been around for quite some time. Played in a lot of prestigious tournaments in his uh, in his lifetime. Where is it? Well, it's not that old. Well, I mean, he's basically the same age as I am. I think he's actually he's actually he younger than I oh, am. Actually. But uh, okay, okay, I thought he was young. How, how? Okay, okay. Question: How young did he think he is? Honest answer. Twenty-three. Wow. So he, so he'd been to his uh, first TI when he was like thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm. Oh, you were. Uh, you were talking about uh, NA Dota, so I. Their region. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're an SCA baby now. That is true, yeah. But yeah, um, I remember I remember KP back from like uh, TI5 when he played with, was it MVP, was it MVP Hot6 or MVP Phoenix? I think it was MVP Phoenix because Hot6 had a different roster. That's the that's the team I remember KP playing the first time. That was seven years ago. Um, was already a, a young gentleman by the time. But uh, yeah. Dota has evolved so much that, I mean, it used to be we know MVP Phoenix. We see even before the draft, we know how they're gonna play Dota, and teams still can't deal with. It. Now Dota has evolved so much. Oh, as fun. for the dead. That's kind of a bump. The, uh, on a positive note, the players have. Got yeah, we just kind of got stuck on our tracks, right? <laughs> Time goes past and we don't stretch. Still treading where we are. But don't worry, They're, we're not the only ones out there. Lucify. Some early poke on the pudge. Connected hook. Nothing special happening there. KP, though, in a bit of trouble. These illusions are almost killing him. Riptide. Oh. 
issues. And actually, he has gone for two points in his passive above uh, maxing out Q first. So uh, we'll see if he sticks to that. Most likely the second point in that in January will be taken at the top lane as we see Seri fly. A lot of slows, a lot of nukes. Weird decision from King. Uh, we gotta give him the benefit of the doubt, but I think he's gonna understand soon that he cannot deal with it. Usually, when you're maxing out the overwhelming odds, the second that the Naga spawns the illusions, bam, you lose the overwhelming. And the damage is actually quite high. But even despite that, he's doing well in the lane. Oh, he is. Okay. What do you think about. Oh. Yeah, it should be fine here. EJ also jumping in. Potentially even opening up an opportunity to kill the Lich, but the KP so low, he can't actually throw in any extra hits. Um, I want to dive into the, the theory crafting for for KP's LC here. It's the reason why he's skipping Q is because the Naga eventually will leave the lane and go into the jungle, and you don't actually want to spam overwhelming odds since we don't really buy Soul Ring anymore on the, because it's so expensive and it just doesn't prove worth for the money that you buy it for. And sees maxing passive better because it allows to farm better i think that's uh that's a fair assessment you know we can't really know what's in his head but that the could be one of the reasons blue. the other mm -hmm. one could be he's just used to playing he doesn't want to player preference that's true that's a that's a third option like player preference is always out there well cannot forget about that we were talking about uh with a friend of mine we were discussing about slark builds do you always go to Fusel? And then the big topic was Falcon Blade, uh, how strong it is. And we had a good discussion about it. He was looking at some of the pro players and their uh, most recent most recent uh, Slark games. And in some games, you see... Oh, they're not building Falcon Blade at all. And in some games, they're skipping the Fusel Blade. I was like, my theory was, it depends on the matchup. But then I also remembered, it could be a player preference where they build something specific, say Nullifier or Radiance. Uh, where, they, where they're just used to building the item so many times that they're kind of stuck to their habits. Hated. Stuck between Armel and DJ. Here, DJ misses the stun, though. Mistake from Which Armel. You come? He took a step back for no reason when he knew that uh, Hated was just gonna be uh, was just gonna be chased down from the Marcy and needed to move a uh, step back. So he missed the raise Radiant's because tower it caused him the attack. kill, and the OD gets the uh, gets the raise. Plus, the meter hammer is gonna be coming in soon. So these supports from the side of Fnatic, they're really gonna have to be uh, coming more. Much gonna get caught by the bushwhack here. Sari has a cooldown on shield crash, so he can't get the get the quick nuke applied here. He did use flesh heap just in case. Taking hits or not. KP has actually gone for a second point in uh, overwhelming odds above uh, going for the third point in his passive end. The moment we look away, they do get the lockdown on Gabby and take him down. Flesh heap was on cooldown. He did use it before, so they did see an opening, but. A response is coming from Fnatic towards the bottom lane. Armel, DJ, Armel will quickly uh, clear out this camp. Stay on his way towards bottom, but Scotty Lish is hated. He do have a ward inside the or right next to the outpost, which does uh, reveal their movements. To say so far, so good for for Neon Atomic. I thought that their lanes were gonna be really bad, but. Uh... Nagas aren't do doing well. Tango doing tower. awesome. I attack. mean, they still lost the lane slightly, but they didn't lose a single hero, which I thought was going to be happening. So they are they're doing quite well for themselves. And there's not a lot of traffic going towards the mid lane, which which means that the OD can work uh, pretty nicely towards his towards his meteor hammer. This wave, maybe one more, and there it is. Now, then it's going to be that the uh, supports of Fnatic have to rotate rather than they will. KP now level 6. Courier, he's got himself a Bazzi and the broom handle on its way. Gabby, meanwhile, he has dismembered the Pango. And with the hook, still off cooldown, able to get that quick little nuke, preventing the swashbuckle from ever happening. He didn't actually get the chance to cast it anyway, but uh, it would have been one way to pull him back in. Three points in Rot. 
And he gets a revenge kill for himself, and that's also going to be his first flesh sheep of the game. Duel in the bottom lane. Scotty Licious, Armel, going to be there with the raises. And it's not going to be enough for a duel victory, but it is enough for a kill. Here comes JG, though. Wants some revenge here. He's got a bit of mana stolen. Drops the hammer. KP drops low. Armel with the Requiem. They're going to be taking down KP, but the turnaround from Armel. Lock of the kill on the Lich. And a beautiful turnaround for him to get himself his first kill as well. And it was a long TP for the Hoodwink, so no bushwhack. If that was a three-second TP, you might actually catch the SF. But Armel, very nicely done there. They get two kills. LC dying, not the biggest of deals. You didn't have that much in terms of resources. So you'll be uh, happier coming back to the lane. Full mana, full HP. And also one big deal is that you force the OD away from the mid. So he's not going to be immediately uh, pushing that tower as soon as he gets the medium. We're sitting up in mid. Good catch, Scotty Licious here. Stun connects. DJ has to grab onto the Naga Siren, but Armel runs out of mana. He just got the clarity of the courier, but that ain't gonna help you in the battle. Zeri going in with the Rolling Thunder. He's got the connection there. He's got the stun. He pushes set up into the low ground, but it oh. looked good for a moment as he did have a Quelling Blade in his inventory to cut down the tree. Still gets nuked down by uh, Hayden with the Frost Blast and DJ to fall as well under the tower. Atomic finding a lot of kills for themselves, saving Scotty Licious, most importantly, shutting down Armel. I mean, Armel did everything right there. There's no doubt about it. The only mistake is they went for a kill without enough mana. But as soon as he started escaping, his uh, movements were awesome. He got pushed down to the low ground with the uh, with the rolling thunder, knowing that it was gonna kill him if he starts running Ooh. towards the tower. And he uh, he cut down the tree. But it was way too low. For that one. Lich has a very uh, satanic damage. Uh, he has he has the DD. Just one number too much. Oh yep. yeah. Uh, career of the OD died, so he doesn't have his. These are, these are some big timing items that you really need to hit. And Look at bottom. You're not applying pressure, but the enemies are. It's got delicious. Got an ET. You should be fine. Uh, they don't have Radiant TPs on the OD, scan. but they have full TPs with the rest of the crew. Radiant's However, uh, the scan killed. already being popped down, and it's a very good read for the team. Uh, JG giving the information. Nobody in mid. Be careful. Already positioning himself safely behind the tower. Then the scan to Armel showing himself on the lane. Or uh, smoke, but it is a sharpshooter. What can they do with this? Three versus four. Lich is spotted. Bushwhack coming out. But that's a very risky sharpshooter, though, because they can't get a full-on follow-up on it. Coming in as well. Looking for Armel. Has the shield crash, but the slow. You have to press the attack, Armel. Easy dodge there. DJ, though, he's not going to be as lucky. They do have the hammer on the JG. The stun onto the hoodwink and a bounce going all the way to the back line. They're going to catch the lion as well. Make that a second kill. Requiem was loaded for a second, but Armel, he just TPs away into farming, into pushing. Gabby also pushed in the top wave. Pudge still having a free time at 5.6k net worth, but Atomic getting two kills on the supports with that rotation. That that's a good move from Neon Atomic. The question is now just how fast can get, they get away from the bottom lane. And they actually do it quite fast, so they protect the tower for the time being. I gotta be happy. Oh, that's a good grab on the hood. Wait, he's surely dead. Beast, that is. KG with the Meteor Hammer. Oh, it's too early. The Requiem's not gonna go out. Hated in between. Goes for the taunt. The sinister gaze straight into your soul. They're gonna grab the prison as well. They've got KP in it. KP is a bit too late for the party. Sari looking for some body blocks, but KP runs in front. Swashbuckle still goes through him. Has the face boots. And now they're gonna turn it around. Pango. KP though can't get in. Gonna get prisoned up again. He's dropping the hammer. Gabby's gonna grab him. Can they get the bling finger from the line? Yes, they can. Gabby for the kill with the rod. Now on to hate it as well. Gabby's gonna get a lot of flesh heat snacks out of this one. And he still has his ult as well. They're just gonna wait for the rolling thunder to roll out. Out. They're actually not even gonna do anything about him. They're happy with this. They saved their uh they saved KP. Get two more flesh heaps for Pudge. And forcing rolling thunder is also a big deal. So Fnatic now can go for a play. KP is farming this camp, but as soon as he's done with it, he can ah it doesn't go to uh to the base to heal. If you get your resources up and get your heroes together right after it, when there's no rolling thunder, they could have went for a play. Now it, it might be too late. To do something big, but they're still Dyer's gonna rotate towards the Gabby is way too tanky, way too strong this for anyone to challenge him. Right? Yeah, that's a very big pudge. He's at 7,000 net worth already. 
Closing up to the 10K milestone very fast with his current pace, 110 CS already. He died once during the laning stage and has recovered nicely since. Oh, well, I wouldn't say recovered. Let's just say he hasn't been stopped. Smoke coming in from Neon Atomic towards the top lane, but nobody there. They want to open up the map. You have a Naga. You have the map. The more aggressive Radiant positioning from the, the, the aggressive your position, the easier it is for you to cut waves with the, uh, without actually being... We'll see if they'll they are able to... Radiance oh, Tower is still super high on HP, and the new Meteor Hammer just doesn't do that. It's still gonna take a while. This is a big problem that their line is facing. Yeah, but I think the old Meteor Hammer was kind of busted. Maybe. It's like the Wraith packed up today. Top tower is under attack. Too good not to pick it up. Is under attack. Have a Naga in the team. If you can uh, time the Meteor Hammer and the Zone Cancel appropriately, you can uh, start your fight with a stun. Always Dyer's nice to have. Uh, sir, that's that's an easy tower last hit miss there. It was only three creeps. I'm a bit disappointed. He was uh, he was hoping that we weren't looking because uh, you know the, ah, the tower is dead. We're just. Dyer's top tower is under attack. <laughs> happens. KP. Is, uh, he is in the fog for now, so Atomic will get the chance to jump him, but Genuel, it's a kill they can't take. Fi already close up in the trees, Genuel placing himself safely behind the tower, but a hoodwink with the bushwhack, sharpshooter loaded up. To the Rolling Thunder, Swashbuckle will finish him off, simple easy kill right there, but look at mid. Mid tier 1 is in peril. Now there's no sharpshooter, there's no rolling thunder. Good opportunity for Fnatic to just take this tower. And maybe even force a fight where they feel stronger. Meteor Hammer from actually cancelled out. The stun coming out from DJ onto 2. Requiem will finish off Lich and there's the Pango dead as well. Three man Bushwhack is gonna do a little bit here. Lich buying back as well, but the tower's already fallen. And they were hoping that they would be able to lift that tower, but just Daddy? nothing. Thank you! Thank you! Well, that wasn't a close hook, but uh, Lich kept on marching forward to a fr frost blast the creep wave. That would have been him getting caught in the hook. Okay, so someone in Fnatic's team told KP, Yo, what the hell are you doing? Max that overwhelming gods, and he is going to be going for that build. Hey! He so he, is, uh, he knows what his job is. Maybe would have uh, done a bit better in the lane if, uh, if he had done it immediately, but overall he uh, should be fine. Maybe he actually went for it because he was getting low and hoping the charge will give him a Nice jump in mid. Deji barely gets off the prison. Shielded up as well. Scotty Lich is coming in from the side. DJ going to take some damage here. Armel with no Requiem. A chance for Atomic to win this fight. But Gabby Aghanim's freshly picked up. The song comes out. Naga getting slowed down. But the rock is finally kind of run out as well. But the song popped the prison there. KP getting caught as well. Seri controlling Armel in the river. The SSF guest doesn't get the chance to participate in the fight. And they will target Armel as well. Bounce back as well. And now there's a hook coming in as well. JG got to get hexed up by the line. Genuel with a finger. JG taken down. Another stack being secured. It is just the OD falling though, but they have a chance to fight back and hate it slowly but surely walk into his death. Gabby didn't bite onto the uh, Naga Siren there. The only reason why the, why the fight did go as good as it did for the side of me and Atomic. If he uses this member on the Naga, she dies before anyone can save her. And the... Uh, the fight just ends there. But after the sleep, it actually set up the fight quite nicely. Pango comes thunder, and uh, it allows Neon Atomic to, uh, to switch the fight in their favor. With, with three heroes dead, they're going to be more than happy considering the fact how it started. Yeah, I, I think as well, if Gabby, Gabby was able to get that uh, dismember off, that would have been a whole different story. He was doing a lot of damage during that song. Positive side of having Rot on is you're not actually taking any, but you're dealing a lot of damage to the uh, the enemy heroes around you. Technically, that's a it's a very interesting assessment because usually when we talk about being pacified, like the fact you're you're stated as a pacified hero because they can't hit you and you, they can't hit you back. Uh, sorry, you can't hit them, they can't hit you back. But if you have Rot on and you're pacified. Is it really pacification if you're hurting other people? Well, 
philosophical questions for the day to think about as uh, Gandhi gonna jump in with the dismember. Dual victory, Requiem, okay. Feel the hate, Siri. Oh, straight into the Roche pit. They know that there's no song for, uh, for at least a half a minute and they wanna go in. It's hard though, I mean, Neon... Does Pango buy back to this? That's a big question. Lips all deep from the Bushwhack and he bounces off her and they will get the buyback from the Pango. He will be able to participate in this fight. Lion about to fall. Every spell on cooldown though. I think he can see with Arnold the haste rune. Presley picked up Gabby, charges in prison, comes out from JG. Seri with the Rolling Thunder. He's just bought back into this. Now he wants to get an opening here for Neon Atomic. Fnatic, look at their positioning. They're so far away, waiting for Gabby to land the hook. Hango able to get out. Seri did isolate them for the time being. Lion bought back. So two buybacks being spent here and Roshan reset. That was a really beautiful stun attempt from the uh, from the Lion. I don't know if you saw it there, but just as the uh, uh, as the Rolling Thunder was finishing, he actually got the uh, got the right angle. But the thing is that Seri was waiting he saw what was gonna happen and he gets yep. himself away in time yeah you don't want to don't want to wait for your ulti to run out and then swashbuckle you want to do it uh want to do it during get caught by the sun so good read from Januel. i did i did see that that was uh right in the river 14 11 the first 20 minutes fanatic holding on to a lead for now pudge like is big <laughs> I like JG switched his item choices. He was thinking about going for a Aghanim Scepter, which is great, but you need extra damage. Staff, and we'll go more for this right click build in the f And that is that is a necessity. He's gonna be the one to punch, especially. You might just get targeted here too. They are smoked up. They just got information in the top lane is uh sitting around in the area. Pudge literally just blinked next uh blinked past him. Gabby is gonna close in the ranks onto JG. Blink in three seconds. Creepwave might be spotting him here, though. More staff available, DJ. We'll get close enough, and that is a very dead OD. Yep. False sense of security with the LC in the end. Uh, very nice move for Fnatic. So, the Anatomic are like, Radiant's okay, if they're missing for too long, they attack. might be uh, trying to Dyer's go for Roche, so you're not panicking them. Just work out this time. No OD. Not buying back for it either. No map control. So they're gonna let this one slide. Fnatic will take the first Roche. DJ, while his unleash was up, he dropped the clock. It's a very nice play there. Just to allow them to kill it just a bit faster. There you go. Armel with the second life. Gabby with eight flesh heap stacks and 1400 gold short from the BKB. Good time. Gabby and Armel have uh, have uh, kind of uh, put their uh, BKB timings in sync. We're gonna have nine, two nine BKB charges on Fnatic, and it's then gonna be on Neon Atomic mainly Scadalicious to make sure that the waves are pushed in. So. It's mostly going to be Scadalicious kind of uh, dodging Jonuel with the illusions. If he manages to do that, you can create enough space so you don't have to fight head on against two BKBs and the Nagus and actually find some openings here and there to, uh, to go through those charges. Because with, with this lead that Fnatic has right now, if they force out like five versus five fights in the next five to uh, seven minutes, Neon Atomic are very likely to to lose most of them, and then the gold lead might become way too. Dude. Scotty uh, actually wanted to build the Orchid, uh, as he's had his Manta. So do you think we're gonna see Heart next? Uh, heroes. Scotty or Heart? Fanatic. Mm, I think. Because Scotty is good against the Pudge, but Heart in general would allow you to fight against all the damage from Fnatic. I'm thinking if there's a way for you on your illusions, because they're not there. Something that doesn't give that. Maybe a BKB on the Night Siren action. Agonims. <laughs> I think BKB. <laughs> I think BKB. BKB, I yeah. I'd love to see. BKB or, butterf or Butterfly to allow you to split push and f 
I, I, I just don't see Hart and the Scotty making a difference. That, that's just it. You get these stats, but the line just kills all of your illusions. Yeah, I guess you need damage, but you're also only at 1600 HP, and it feels like already the rot damage is going to start tearing into this Naga Siren very fast, plus the the Lion Finger. There you have a lot of stats, or just straight up immunity. He is going for the heart. I mean, I didn't have much faith in the Naga in, in this game either way. I thought they were gonna switch it to, uh, to another position. It's kind of delicious though yesterday he did show he can play this hero well. Th but this is a real test against so many combat. Harry finds the lack of faith on this Naga disturbing. The uh, Fnatic looking for a kill and Lucify is a good target to go for if they can just catch him. Yes they can. DJ jumping in from a million miles to land on top of him. Another finger stack for Januel. He's up to three. Scotty Lish is still. He's spotting the trees. Actually gets silenced up. And Gabby taking a honest one versus one. But look who's taking more damage out of these two. Scotty Lish is dead. DJ, what a KS. Oh, he got outplayed. He got outplayed so Radiant's much. The second that the punch saw an illusion, he pressed the flesh heap. He knew he could be targeted there. And then Naga Siren was like, why am I not doing damage? Why am I not doing damage? And that... Uh, Train of thought extended Dying way too long. The science, uh, the science stopped, and he got bitten there in the uh, in the middle of the animation. This is making a slight mistake there, but he did get out. Late. JG was like, we should kill this guy top, but Seri diving under a uh, a tier two tower doesn't feel like an optimal attempt. So uh, Rolling Thunder spent, and they're disengaging KP on a chase. It's got more movement speed during the uh, duration of the overwhelming odds, and he has also gone for the Radius talent, which is uh, seems to be the theme for these Legion commanders these days. They're just skipping uh, the other talent completely. Gabby jumped on Sharpshooter is on its way. Lich ulti, but the BKB comes off. The hook is gonna connect onto the Pango, but Gabby down to a thousand HP. JG on the chase. BKB down at about three seconds. Well, less than that. It's already off, but the Shadow Fiend walks in between. Bushwhack misses. Armel, he is holding the front line with that Aegis. That rolling thunder on top was one creative way to protect your tier two on the bottom. Or at least four. They did go through the punch BKB because of it, so I, I wouldn't say it was that bad, bad of a um, and given forcing support to top, immediately making a move here on the SF the punch. Ideally, you would want the BKB from the S as well, yeah, yeah. but uh, you are wasting some. So, so very cool play. Both teams are filling in a lot of pauses this game. Haven't had any uh, <clears throat> notification from the admins about the pause timers, but uh, plenty of them. During this first game of uh, Neon Atomic versus Fnatic, uh, we saw a tie series happen before this. That was with uh, Unity and Lil Gun. Have a third best of three, uh, best of two, sorry. Uh, after this one, where we're looking at probably, if if this is a hype series, I would hype up the next one too. Spawn versus Geek Fam. Right after this, Spawn sitting at second place and Geek Fam dominating yesterday. Against yep. Execration. Geek Fam really played good Dota yesterday. They made a comeback in one game and in the other they just they just crushed. I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what they can accomplish because when you see a team come back into a game, it goes to show that they don't crumble under pressure and they have this uh, consistency in their play to uh, to play Dota even when they're losing, going from uh, from lane to lane and just trying to make something happen and of course capitalize on the mistakes of the enemies that we yourself have forced out. But uh, yeah, coming back into this game here, Fnatic, they might have been forced towards the top Dyer's lane there with that rolling thunder onto KP, but they Radiant very quickly do come back. So, Neon Atomic doing their best to, uh, to delay, but now it's it's over. Now it's over. Left all alone and defenseless here. Downside for Atomic is uh, the amount of objectives they've been able to take during this game. They just finished off the Tier 2 tower with uh, the Naga Illusions and a Creep Wave. That being their third power kill. It's four for Fnatic, three for uh, Atomic. 
It's been top and bottom that they've been focused on, but this bottom lane, also something that Fnatic quickly wants to get, get rid of, especially if the opponent is uh, unable to defend it. It's an easy tower. Bottom lane now completely belongs uh, to Fnatic. Easy to push in, not have to worry about it too much. Neonatomi has a really good void here on the bottom lane, but the thing is they don't have the heroes to capitalize. Well, they're actually going to find a hero in the jungle. It's loser Fi, and another one is JG's OD. Gabby with his BKB on, he can't get prisoned, and he just jumps on top. Find a kill. Armel, though. Still has the Aegis. Not sure if this is going to be the best of kills because it's about to expire in 30 seconds anyway. He's just going to stand his ground. Another Rolling Thunder. Nice force stab there from Januel. Armel's going to live. Hater's going to be falling on the other side of the map. Fnatic running them over under a tier 2 tower. But they cannot kill. That's another Seri Rolling Thunder that doesn't lead into anything. Januel, beautiful save. A lot of things happened there on the map. Gabby, the way he caught the AD, he jumped on him. OD uh, managed to force staff out, and he got hooked right after it. Now, Gabby wanted to TP to the top lane, and the Lich was like, no, no, don't kill my friends, kill me. So he went for the Sinister Gaze, and then Gabby just turned around and actually tanked the, uh, the full uh, Lich ulti next to the Ice Fire, and he took absolutely no damage. It was it's just insane. Usually the uh, the chain frost crushes heroes, but the fudge doesn't feel it. Worry in the world. Gabby blinking in. He wants JG again. He will go for it. He's gonna take him down a half requiem coming in from the side of the four steps. Gonna be applied as well. Hate had already blown up. JG gonna fall on the low ground. Lucifer be chased by DJ. Does not have the dispose available. And another tier two tower for Fnatic. Their gameplay is so simple to execute. Just running forward. That, that's how it goes. If you catch the OD, there's absolutely no save for the fudge. And uh, you're gonna kill everyone. And the enemy carry, he cannot help. I don't know. If Naga comes over, Skadalicious is just gonna die. So he's doing what uh, he does best. Split pushing. Yeah, the lanes are in a good position for him. But Fnatic, they just go deal with the lanes. And then come back to the mid lane. It's very easy steps for them. And considering that they took the top tier 1 and the bottom tier 2 as well. Now the tier 2 in the mid lane. They have a really short path to get between the lanes and actually deal with the creeps. So... It's a very tough spot for Neon Atomic right now. I don't know how they change things. Yeah, and I think it's safe to say this heart on the Naga is not a game changer. He's he just doesn't have the damage, and now there's the the Wraith Pack that's well, it's been up for up, up on the Legion Commander for a while, but with it, I'm, make Naga do even less damage. Loaded to the gills. It has a Lotus Orb on KP, which is which is a great item in this. Put it on someone, and the OD is gonna think twice about. A lot of these. Gonna get the jump on Armel this time. He does not have the Aegis. Sharpshooter being loaded up, but a massive nuke on the back line. Thanks to KP and DJ. And an Armel raise landed at the same time. Evaporates the two supports. KP, he wants his duel. He wants his second duel victory of the game to be found, though. Pango hiding in the tree line. Fnatic. They're turning their sights towards the next Roshan, but it's 40 seconds until it's up. I, I, I mean, usually you come back into the game, split pushing is a good way to do it. And Neon Atomic are doing a good job at split pushing. The thing Dyer's is, that split pushing needs to be used attack. in some way. Getting kills is pretty great. And when you see a hoodwink on the enemy side, you're like, okay, they have a chance to do it. But then you look at Fnatic's heroes and you think, how do you kill even one of them if it's not the Lion? And Lion has two mobility items, so he's not an easy one to catch. And that puts Neon Atomic in a place, yeah, they can split push, but not being able to uh, capitalize on it means that you actually have no play. Meanwhile, top lane, KP will get his dual victory that he's been hunting for. I'm not that he does much with them anymore, but it's infinite scaling. Might as well. Triple the damage on top of what he already has. It feels good. It feels good when you're... I mean, KP is winning the yeah. game and he has 30... He, he deserves some love there. His team helping him to get the deal. Look at Armel's position. Pretty much the only hero that is close to him is DJ. And he knows I can't die. And the problem is... <laughs> 
there might be a chance that four of the heroes of Neon Atomic go on them and they lose a couple of them without gaining a single kill. That is just how it goes. That is how strong Armel. Talking about DJ, can we talk about the chat uh, build for the chat item that he's building? Under attack. I like more that. Shield. More far shield than dead. No more Naga Siren by the looks of a Scotty Licious. What's your song gonna do? Gabby with BKP chasing down the Naga and so close to it too. Hooks available. Just needs to land it. Lion on top of him. Gabby finishes off the kill. And Naga, that's how much her heart did. Only to get caught. And they will blow him up. But can they kill KP? It's a good pickoff. It's a good start for things. And the hammer is dropped. And he's running away, juking around in the trees. They're chasing JG. DJ on top of him. Tosses him back closer to our mail. And that double damage and sidekick Shadow Fiend ain't something you want to run into when you're alone walking in these dark streets in the night. Hate it. He's also down. KP diving towers. Even if he dies here, if he even dies here, he even duels the pango for a kill. And he's regenerating up look at that sidekick lifesteal he's back to full hp fanatic are just ripping atomic apart ah, them to shreds. that was an od with a frost shield usually when you have a frost shield you kind of don't take damage especially a hero that has relatively high armor like an od nah, it, it wasn't even close sf with the dd as you mentioned and the sidekick just crushes him to the frost shield. I mean, it's over. I'm not going to even say it's not looking good. It's uh, this game is over. You have no play if you're if you're Neon Atomic. I don't know what Scadalicious is hoping for. Even if he gets the Blood Thorn, there's just so many BKBs that you have to be dealing with. Yeah, it is it a bit of a Eta Gege situation? But I guess they'll give it one more fight. Love the Steve Ward here, by the way. So cool. Not in not in your most traditional place to place down a ward, so it's most likely not even gonna get the ward. If Fnatic sees everything that's going on, they know Atomic has left the base. So Fnatic, as they finish off Roshan, I think they're gonna instantly react with Blinks and go with Scotty, even with a DD. What can he do with his Naga? Can he take down KP? An attempt is given, and he's almost taking it down. It's not enough though. Yeah, they will finally finish him off, but they're losing everybody else. Three hits on the Lich, hated, burnt down. Serial run. Tries to roll to safety, and again, Janiel tries to time the stun so he'd catch the pango. DJ, the supports are chasing the pango around the map, but they won't be there on time to kill him. Knock it down for 50 seconds. I was thinking why Neon Atomic were calling GG, but yeah, wise words from Fog. This is what's keeping them in, keeping them alive. Times. As long as they Radiant's stay positive, they will. Not necessarily true, but, but, <laughs> Not. At least it, <laughs> but at least it uh, it allows you to uh, play a little bit. Staying positive is most definitely going to help. Yep. Radiant's Good game from Fnatic. Under attack. <sighs> That's all there is to say. A bit of an outdraft situation. What can you do? One more fight attempt. They kind of overlap the bushwhack there with the prison. Armel disarmed. Gabby looking for the hook, but already blinking away. Oh, oh, and sidekick. Oh, he sold the meteor hammer. He's like, yeah, I'm not getting it off against the bunch anyways, so let's just sell it and, uh, and buy the Aghanim set. Okay. All right, well, let's see if he can keep his life. That's a no. Zeri trying to cause some havoc in the back line. Hate it. He's going to drop next. He has a buyback. They've got the pushback on the SF, but there's also a duel onto the Hoodwink. And with three heroes down, Armels is outplayed. I believe that's also the case here. Well, you're so far ahead. It is easy to outplay when you're uh, bullying the kids. But yeah, uh, Fnatic, they take game one. You know, I'm uh, going to quote one uh, streamer. Uh, we lost that sing sing that says it. That should be a uh, that should be a voice line because this uh, this one you're you're not coming back. That should be a voice line. Well, if you're a self-respecting pro player, you're never going to say that out loud in uh, <laughs> during the game. I guess maybe one day. Just toying with them here in front of the fountain. 
And just uh, the ancient's already down to half HP. They do have the backdoor protection up, but uh, JG will kill off J uh, kill off KP. DJ with his nullifier doesn't do much. They are extending the game a bit further. Not giving up at least Shadow Fiend taking a uh, honest battle. He he doesn't have the sidekick this time though. But here comes Gabby. We haven't seen the Pudge for a couple of minutes now. He's gonna make a reappearance. He's taking a lot of damage though, but Danny will. X is one, stuns the other. OD back to the fountain. Scotty Licious will live. The Armel Shadow Fiend finally killed. Gabby does get his ulti off, but the four staff will break that. Push to safety. Out again, Gabby still getting bullied here. Maybe they can kill him here. Yep, this looks like they will. Okay, so Gabby's down, and with no Aegis remaining, Shadow Fiend is also down. They truly really want to play it all the way to the end. They thought they wanted Fnatic, but uh, no, not the case. The OD with an Agonims. Diving him into the fountain is just not the smartest idea. He is stealing way too much mana. And then we saw how much damage Sanity's Eclipse actually did to KP. It killed him, destroyed him, and it was uh, it was easy to run down yeah. the other as well. So uh, Fnatic, now they understand, okay, we're going to have to take this one slowly. Because remember what we talked about yesterday. Dota right now is, if you miss your timings and overextend a couple of times, even like if the draft is your way, if you have a big lead, you miss your timings, the enemy team can come back. The yeah, there's always a chance, right? I mean, it is a game of Dota after all, but uh, Pango getting blown up by Unleash and the duel from DJ. Aiden still chilling around in the area. Naga making an appearance here too. He's got Janual on the, on the Lion getting caught. JG catching another hero. I kind of feel bad for uh, calling Fnatic that they already won the first first game when they were taking down the tier 4 towers and nice Dukes here He's still trying to TP away, but uh, looks like it's just gonna be an endless chase Walking under the vision uh, They finally found him But yeah, I already called them that they won the first game, but uh, right now it's just Neon Atomic like yeah We still have a lane of racks. We just got like what says uh, five kills maybe maybe six kills now As long as we stay positive we'll win that's their motto when yeah. they're, uh, they're staying in this game. Uh, Phil, as you mentioned, one lane of Rax. It's not over. Pushing the throne down against the Lich. Not easy to do. Fnatic. They're gonna need a slower approach. Them attempting that uh, that fight in the mid lane without their two cores. Also, is gonna hurt them. Uh, mid lane tower is down. This opens up the possibility for Neon Atomic for the Trosh, maybe. Can do here. Gabby jumping on Scotty Licious. Scotty Licious has a BKB, but not gonna get to use it. And your carry is gone. Gabby's just right clicking an ice fire here. Got to tame the lion. KP chasing hated. <laughs> Duel from a million miles away. Prison save coming from JG. Another prison being placed down on the ground. Gabby looking for the hook. Won't connect. Two heroes gone down to three. Down to two. Stay right click down Sari. Oh, he drops the hammer, but it's not enough even to kill KP. Gabby's still chasing a lot of mobility. JG also, he's hiding in the trees right now. TP's back home. Hango coming in with a buyback. Lucify is dead, so that's another kill for Fnatic. Another hero without a buyback. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Cody overestimated his damage. The reason he did so much damage last time is because he got so many astral imprisonment charges. Now it just wasn't the case. Diving deep, looking for the hook. Doesn't connect. We're gonna finish off the final lane of racks here. It's gonna be Mega Creeps, and after that, the Ancient, which has already been exposed. They take it down a half HP the last time they fought. It's five versus three. Gabby almost gets the hook connection, but the roll up on Sari allows him to stop. Walk in the way of the hook. And now, now can we say Fnatic wins the game? No. Let's see this one through. AG takes a bit of beating here from DJ. DJ is already pulling out the creeps inside the fountain here. Four versus four. Sari getting some work done here. They finished off KP and they finished off DJ. Gabby gonna get the jump of Sari. Nice prison save coming out. OD does get hexed up. Armel, he's got that instant requiem with the arcane blink. And OD is still actually surviving for the time being. Lich all deep bounces wherever he wants to. It doesn't feel to hit the right targets either. And now Gabby 
And there's his Scotty Licious. He's out of BKBs and Hayden's still here. JG has been saving their life so many times, but are they just gonna fall? They finally will. Scotty Licious to take down the punch, will he? But starting to regenerate with the dismember. And that sharpshooter finally gonna land on the target. Gabby, he's gonna go oh, very low on HP. He's not gonna die though. <laughs> and maybe now, okay, RML finishes off the ultra kill team wipe. There we have it. GG. Yeah, I was afraid to call it even the yeah, but nothing else left. You don't have buybacks, you uh, don't have any heroes, and both uh, both the punch and Cypher that are uh, alive. So, actually, I thought they were gonna die there once the song came out, but SF turned it around when he jumped. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Attack. 
Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Gold and sweet. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's courier has been killed. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack.
About me, <laughs> I, I want some humble bragging here. Fanatics. <laughs> All right, let's roll in three, two, one. I'm just waiting for Harry's reaction here. <laughs> hey, what's up, people? Uh, we're back for game number two, Fanatic versus Neon Atomic. And uh, what we're basically starting off things with here is the Naga ban. So I don't think we're necessarily going to see the Pudge. Probably going to go for something different. We'll see. Well, we don't know too much about this uh, until now. Uh, Fnatic probably going to be playing their own hero pool. The rest of the teams just seem to be reacting to what they do, uh, especially with this Primal Beast pick uh, being one of those heroes. If Fnatic Lux likes to play remaining. flexible in many roles, uh, not sure if KP prefers Five Primal Beast, remain. but Armel and DJ definitely love to play this hero. I think I've seen Januel play it a couple of times too, like maybe two, what, maybe one or two months ago, probably two months ago. So we'll see what they want to do with it. But Harry, um, your takes on uh, Neon Atomic and their draft uh, in Fanatics game number one. Is there something they can look at to do better? Like maybe fill in the gaps they were missing? Fanatics, well, you have two approaches. One is if you're Die picking a hero that can be countered, have some uh, flexibility to it. Um, the other one is go for classic heroes. We have every type of team fight laning state stuff which they did right now so that at least you don't get out draft so you get to play the game so they went with the remaining. with the second one is the safer of the uh of the two plus you know for uh, for you to have a possibility of switching the naga to another role it means that you have scrimmed a lot played together a lot and stuff like that for you to uh try stuff like that out and obviously it's uh it's not something that they did given that almost every southeast asia team now is Fanatics is a new stack of players. So uh, if you're gunning for the win, I think this Dying is the uh, ban. Yeah. Good approach to take at least. Um Disruptor Mars. I like the starter. It's not the uh it's not the best necessarily, uh considering what you can go with the Mars, but you can still leave the Mars laning partner uh, open for later. They do have the Ten the next pick remaining. before Fnatic does. Five has to reply to remaining. it primal beast pango so you got yourselves uh heroes that are they're strong no matter what items they have just as long as they have the levels for it primal beast already active early pango probably i would say uh, level eight level nine he starts to be uh, a, a trouble basically with any rotation he does he has a lot of damage to apply especially with the shield crash and the rolling thunder rotations so bad. maybe pick up a hero that activates at the same time the pango with the mm -hmm. pango or just I mean kind of have pango go with somebody else you know i mean you could say that the probably 10 seconds especially remaining. if they're the two cores if let's say it's a it's a mid lane pango and five seconds remaining Primal beast or vice versa they can work really well together and they get into the faces of the opponents for south dps which is actually quite good against the uh, mars disruptor lineups because let's say you see a disruptor under his tower you jump in and you kill him fast and then the mars dp it is a question how uh, how much it can change but the hmm. thing is with these kind of heroes you are gonna have so right off the bat i think there's gonna be a lot of emphasis on the disruptor if um hated i'm gonna be playing it if he keeps a good position in this game, we'll be creating a, a good, some good opportunity 
team, but I think every single time he missed steps, he's gonna. Impossible. This uh, team this team game team. could be a good learning curve for him to see just how far he can step out the heroes Fnatic's before he's. Turn he's... to pick. Rubik. I'm gonna go for the Rubik. Uh, Rubik Mars looks like the lane uh, for Neon Atomic Disruptor, and his buddy is still left for later. At least they get to respond to what Fnatic decides as either their mid or their carry, unless they still want to flex with the Primal Beast and the Pango, leave things open for now. Um, but what kind of heroes does Fnatic now really want to bring up after they see the Rubik? Or actually, let's 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 rephrase that. What do they not want to pick as they see the Rubik come out with the Mars Rubik lane? They wouldn't want to pick something like a Jakiro. Shaker comes to mind. So, uh, but if you're talking about lane in particular, um, well, okay, Morphling is bad. That'll be uh, one you don't want to uh, play but you don't want the brawl type hero unless it's a, it's a jugger mm. or a life stealer because you're gonna lose the uh, the trades all the time so you want right, to make right. sure that you're playing something uh i'm talking about the Ten carry match remaining. uh carry hero something that stays away and farms and then five you get a position five remaining. that gets into the faces of the opponents entrances is actually quite decent at that so i like it and then you uh you just get a carry that stays away and focuses on creeps you're not gonna win a engagement again yeah i think with mars rubik i thought like medusa tb are kind of like you don't necessarily want to pick those like if the terror blade is not great at all against Rubik. I think Rubik is one of the uh, the best lane counters to the hero because of the Fate Bolt uh, scaling damage. Yep. And Mars, obviously, Spear, uh, even if it's just used for Harass, very powerful tool uh, in the lane. Though Fnatic uh, Visage uh, is a pretty interesting pick in terms of uh, how it actually doesn't really play along the lines of the pango early on but when we hit the mid game phase visage pango primal beast uh, a lot of lockdown with damage so they they all Fnatic kind of sit together to nicely Industry. if they're the ones able to initiate i mean with the visage or with the pango with the visage you just want to wait for the visage to get to six you because if you would rotate earlier even if you would get kills it wouldn't result in a tower unless you time it perfectly exactly siege creep the first siege yeah. creep Dire team back. on the second one. Um, but as soon as the Visage is level 6, that is when the rotations from the Pango towards the Visage start. And you're probably going to be doing it for the majority of the game, because the Visage is not mobile uh, around the map. He likes to stay in one place. And Pango likes to run around. It, it mm. does make sense Ten that they're going to be together, because the Visage is the one that is... Exactly. That, that's that's why I was kind of bringing up the theme of Pango level 8, level 9. Visage yeah. also like level 10, level 11 is kind of where uh, he would like to be with someone because hero kills start to be worth a lot of experience. To get that level 12 fast on Visage usually either comes from fighting with someone only going on to five versus five like battles that's where a low level visage is it, it, it just feels a bit useless it's like why are you even here it's like just go to go push out a lane maybe like you said he's very uh seconds, he's maybe. not mobile so he would like to stay in one place push out the lane live in the lane kind of like the beast masters kind of like the night stalkers do they sit in the lane for a very long period of time to max out their experience gain the amount of gold they can accumulate to get those next uh next items that that allow them to then find finally join in with the team so a bit different in terms of the offlaners but already jumping on onward in the draft uh the ember spirit for neon atomic so you have a playmaking hero that works well with mars and rubik and also you have a hero that deals pl pl wouldn't have a good Dire time in the lane bad. but when you look at disruptor mars rubik i mean he he crushes i think the best hero for fanatic would most likely be the jug uh, it's somewhat risky to to go for it in a sense if things start going south um, you don't really have someone to stay in front Ten and you don't have a remaining. lot of heroes to make plays with but you've drafted yourself in a situation like that so Five you take the jug remaining. and you make sure that your lanes don't go that badly jug and Trantor shouldn't have much issue pango would do well in the, uh, in the mid lane against pick. the ember primal beast and the vestige should do fine Dire and then the jug is good pick. against all monkey king a uh, lane counter against the Mars will give you a bit of a more stable lane for Fnatic, but could this be a DJ Monkey King? 
Primal Pango know. Visage course could also be something I'm looking for. Obviously, Five Monkey King carry me. is the thing you're looking for here. Obviously, you know, Atomic thinking the same thing. Five but seconds. I'm just throwing it out there. I like the Monkey King more. You have a Visage that's a fat front stands in place that you shade on. You can be there to protect him. Your laning stage, you actually have two potential now between the Choose your hero. King. And we are going to be seeing a Lena. The thing is, is it going to be... Okay, it is going to be... With an Ember in the safe lane. I thought maybe... We're... No, no such luck. Yeah, it would have been nice to see a safe lane Lena. Not going to lie. Um, I think that's one of the... That I enjoy watching at the current meta is bringing out this uh, this Lena into a carry role instead of the mid mid lane Lena that we see. But I'll throw you a question: right click Lena or spellcaster Lena? Uh, currently, right click. Spellcaster Lena, especially in this game, much sense. Your main Ten target is going to be the remaining. Visage and the Gravekeeper's Cloak. So, especially Five in this game, remaining. currently in the meta, you're seeing people go more. The right click build because you need the BKB and then it just feels more natural. It is uh it it it, it is definitely a build where um the most most of the Lena's are like, well this is the one you go for. But during TI we saw a couple of flame cloak Lena's, especially if there was like an undying against you, and you could you could do eighty percent with one Laguna Blade and kill him off with a Dragon Slave when you pop the Flame Cloak, where the Aghanims on the Lina was super, super good against these tanky offlaners and uh, get them out of the way because they knew that Undying is going to be a nuisance uh, eventually. Like the sustain the hero brings during team fights, getting close on you with the Flesh Golem, getting that amp damage. Uh, you just don't, didn't want to deal with it and you went for the, uh, the Flame Cloak on the Lina after that. So. We'll see if uh, JG considers something similar. He wants to keep a distance, either throwing right clicks or having more mobility and being able to cast abilities while having that uh, unobstructed um, movement with Flame Clock, where you're technically flying in the air. Was it? I think it was six seconds duration. Yeah. So uh, during six seconds, you can move. A lot of go high ground, low ground, high ground, juke your opponents, do whatever you want. But we'll see as that will be revealed in time. Game number two, Fnatic versus Neon Atomic. And Atomic known to take these ties from one series to another. Uh, definitely capable of doing it. So do you think they have a better chance here than they did in game one? Or does this look again like a Fnatic outdraft to you? Uh, I know this is not a Fnatic. I... I would still slightly prefer Fnatic's draft, but Neon Atomic have all the tools to win the game. There is always going to be a part of the match, stronger a part of the match where you kill uh, a situation where the Mars initiates better and you just kill someone before spawn. So this time around, you have something to play with, and you have so, yeah. different cores, Lina and the Ember applying damage in different ways so it's not like your whole carry potential is going to be countered just by the as long as we stay positive we'll win the last game yep. Pudge has a bkb he jumps the od and the uh, naga siren and die now th that cannot happen i still prefer fanatics lineup i think the last pick monkey king was the uh, perfect fit i actually forgot about the hero completely jug would have been good but just as not not as good as the monkey king because this hero provides more possibilities to get kills which is something that fanatic was slightly plus it's uh it's an even stronger laning presence especially against the uh, rubik you know rubik with the fade bolt he doesn't really reduce the damage of the stack so still slightly favoring fanatic but neon atomic they uh uh they drafted themselves into a possible success to unlock I'm gonna throw in a uh, a interesting well not that fact this is probably just you know basic fluff talk as we're doing pause time but uh, I took all this time to count how many iron branches we actually have in this game we have 19 out of the possible 60 inventory slots of iron branches so uh, one third of the server uh, filled with trees or extra tree. Ah! 
nice. Thank you, Armel. Uh, it, it, it is. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Panda. The, the... Next time, next time. <laughs> Does make sense. The mid laner is always a ton of brand. Sure. Because this is the. Uh, you only want to start with three tangos and you need. So most of still be uh, turning out to be magic. <laughs> what I want to see um, on Visage is what he has in his quick buy already in his inventory, uh, the mangoes. See how that laning trade uh, works out for him. At least with the slate. I don't think you can dodge soul assumption at all with the slate because the projectile is so slow. I think you can. It was a faster one. You might be able to be able, able to disjoint it at least uh, with with ease. I'm confident you can, but it's not easy. To... Still on the side lane. Oh, Gabby, oh Gabby, gonna dodge the LSA stun damage, but he's still looking very dead to me. Losing five with a couple important body blocks here. He's gonna secure the kill as uh, one of the high ground misses there from the Lina. Unfortunate for JG, but uh, Fnatic was starting off with their Monkey King killed already. Uh, Rubik up to 400 gold with that kill. Very unfortunate for JG because he started off with a stun. Even though you're playing against a melee hero, it's it's not the best spell to have because of its yes. cooldown. <laughs> you know, it's getting the fiery soul way. stacks with light strike array just just isn't easy. I'm gonna say that JG is gonna be kind of sad. It cannot apply the same amount. Of yeah, it's true. You would like to have Dragon Slave level 1, as most Linas do, but at least with LSA, maybe, uh... uh it, it, it can be handy against ranged heroes. I feel like if Armel isn't in close melee range, uh... Well, in this case, he can do it, but most of the time, it's like, alright, where do I land the stun? Which creep does he want to get? Um, at least he's not pushing the wave too much with the, uh, the LSA. However, it is pushing right now. Oops. He's up to 6 CS. Bottom lane, Seri versus Gabby, Monkey King versus the Mars. Uh, can go either way. This is basically where the Monkey King slash Ursa versus the Mars matchup can... Uh, is really skill dependent. Yeah, but... I mean, it's harder for it to go super well for them. You usually don't want to... Jump straight onto the Mars, because the only way that you're getting a kill is if he... Here. So that's that's usually not going to happen. So if the Mars heavily loses this lane, it's because he made a mistake. But of course, with the monkey, you want to try to apply the. Yeah. Also, uh, looking at the top lane, you see the Primal Beast, which we've talked about quite a lot. How powerful his level three is. Great to use on the disruptor. Disruptor going to have to live with uh, a, an early glimpse point. If he picks it level 2, as he does. But the charge from DJ comes in. KP also taking a beating here. Scotty Lynch is with a lot of right clicks, and the soul assumption will clean him out. He's already picked up that uh, extra mango as well in his inventory. He hasn't had to use too much mana up till now. We'll give the first kill for Fnatic. And these Visage players love the souls so much. Right click would have been enough for the kill there, but uh, usually because it's such a small cooldown when you're playing the visage you're spamming the soul kill on the top fanatic get themselves on the board but and oh just before the uh the three minute marks now the uh the rain drops are gonna... dire structures are fortified yeah oh, uh, we want to get that jg misses the stun on rml does get the swashbuckle burst uh, onto the Lena. Is under attack. Right clicks to follow. Armel, very low on HP, but keeping up well in the CS department. They're going to find a Rubik kill, meanwhile. It's going to be Gabby hunting him down with the boundless strike. Fighting him with the last hit. Very nicely done. One thing that we didn't mention is uh, you can see how Neon Atomic are trying to keep the Monkey King low. Attack. That is the way to. Play. The thing is, you're up against the enchant. Heals are going to be there. That is the uh, the main thing about slarks and heroes who like to constantly fight. Careful it's just all about the play. region and having the... To have a little bit more. 
Vicious picking up an early point as well in the, uh, in the searing chains. Hated. Massive new coming in from KP. He's going to blow up this disruptor on the next hit. Scotty Licious, with the help of Hated, actually takes down DJ first. Visage uh, does drop quite low on mana. They're able to use that soul assumption at least one more time. Has another mango. Able to get his second kill. KP, though, uh, Visage is somewhat difficult to CS with because every time uh, you want to fight, usually creeps are getting involved. You're going to be missing out on CS. You're so focused on hitting the enemy because you want to start building up those charges. You're going to miss CS while prioritizing on a possible hero kill. It's not a guaranteed hero kill every time you start uh, working all those start those charges. Hence why the Visage always falls behind in CS. I don't think I've seen a single Visage player uh, be in the top two uh, or top three last hitters. They always seem to fall at the bottom. Yeah, if that happens, the, the game could just... You're gonna get a very early Wraith pack and you're never killed. Also, I like KP's uh, skill build in this one. He didn't go for the Gravekeeper Grave Chill until he got the level 4. He went two points into Gravekeeper's Cloak, understanding that the only damage output is gonna be from the Slide of Fist and from the Thunder Strike. Between those two, your, uh, your Cloak is just gonna be... Uh, just gonna be getting new stacks over and over again and yep. you're basically not taking any yeah even even with the orb of corrosion already finished on the ember spirit who would love to keep poking with uh with slate 50 mana per uh, per cast it's a centaur enchanted by january but it's tossed away by lucify so seri uh doesn't end up in trouble sadly he is uh, out of cs range so gabby has a free lane because of the edge Dyer are scanning. Yep, that, that is how it goes. King is having enough time and Mars just isn't. Usually Mars Ruby Crane lane does well, but this King changed a lot. Oh, he almost killed the courier with Lucify and he got stunned there. General saves the courier, but he can't get the kill because... And he's also forced out of the lane. Gabby is <laughs> baiting with that uh, boundless strike. He's like, get out of my lane. Okay, yeah. Do not belong here. Three points in Jingyu Mastery. Glimpse comes out as Primal Beast goes for his full combo of Onslaught Trample. Easy for the Disruptor. Uh, Scotty? One of the... I think what he did there... Uh, he didn't expect there to be uh, one or two more steps with Slide of Fist. And... Wait up. Top tower is under attack. Chant came so late here. His January only just got it off cooldown. Gabby could be able to get his Jingu stacks. No, he doesn't. He's too far away. But in the top lane, diving under the tower with the help of Armel. They've already killed Scotty Licious. They're looking for Hated as well. Trying to run into the tree line. Feels like a desperate attempt for Hated to get out of there. He is going to still keep them behind him. He's leading the race. Oh, nice little moves here. Buying time. He's creating space. He will fall eventually. But when does he fall? Because even DJ with the trample can't quite chase him. KP with the right click finally got able to, be able to take him down. That spent a lot of time from them. JG is already hitting the tier one tower in the mid lane because of it. Yep, as soon as he saw that chase being that long, you start pushing in the lane. You know that no one is going to be coming there very soon. And you already saw that the pack. Nice reads from JG. Still, you do lose two heroes on top. But it's your towers that are being damaged. And the, the only thing that is going economy and the power damage can change the Sari pulling the creep wave here, but he wants to keep holding on to it, so Gabby is going to get a lot of free hits on him. Meanwhile, Rubik is also in trouble in the river, but there is backup showing. At the same time, JG will be able to take down the DD rune for himself, and Radiant's both heroes survive. Is under attack. Okay. J JG gonna look for the LSA stun and uh, got a glimpse in five seconds. So Primal Beast should not be able to escape. JG with this uh, DD rune just punches too hard. No glimpse needed. At least they forced out the DD rune, so Armel can look to rotate toward top lane. If that DD rune stays in the bottle of Lina until she uses it, the Pango cannot leave. Tower is just so. At least they forced it out for a, for a support kill. You're not gonna be too mad about. It. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 
Can't be, can't be up to 57 last hits. 21 denies. Seri with less than 30 CS. 22, uh, 2500 currently. Top lane though. Battle breaking loose once again. Glimpse doesn't get used as DJ was too close to hate it already. He's just sitting in the trees. Wouldn't have done anything for him there. Adi <laughs> Lissa starting to take some hits from these birds as well. But KP, whenever those birds are in trouble, stone form them up, heal them back to full. They don't have the nuke damage to clear them out as they fly back up. Rubik smoked up himself and Lena in the mid, but JG was like, no. <laughs> Fnatic, you could see that as soon as that happened, they knew it was happening and they started pulling away from the top lane. Otherwise, they might have even dove the and the disruptor. Just smoked outside of Ward Vision. Neon Atomic gonna get surprised here. DJ charging in, but Scotty Licious has already level six. It's almost level seven. Remnant jumped to safety. Catch this time. Yeah, they're not gonna be able. Fnatic though, 1k gold lead. They're gonna be more than happy with that one. Gabby's having an awesome time, and the Echo Saber will be coming out at a at a good timing. That that's gonna make it tough for the uh, for the lean up for pretty much anyone to the game. No, pops in this teleports bottom. They want to surprise Gabby. Fnatic full teleports available. They're fighting in top already while the setup is happening here. Hate it. We'll get the glimpse off, but the shield crash is going to be too much. KP still sitting in the lane. Gabby behind the tree line. Is he going to show himself now? This is the big crucial decision making moment because JG is moving away. Fnatic teleporting bottom. Armel is here. Lina's moving away. You don't want to wait up for a big fight because you don't have the Wukong's command. If you do, then maybe, maybe the you wait for the to try diving. Nice spear. Very nice spear from Sari. Not... And we'll clear out Enchantress. Yeah, that's a nice one. I mean, Enchantress is the type of hero that you want to be making these plays with. The thing is that Neon Atomic's lineup has a lot of magical damage. And that is the thing. As soon as the Ench starts invading your jungle, you need to get her out. Because it's way too much vision. So, luckily for Neon Atomic, at least in that regard, covered. I'm going to ask you a um, an opinion question. Should Lina, like Lion, when you kill with Laguna Blade, get a stack of something? Okay. The, the reasoning is her kit is different. Wouldn't benefit too much from Or it would be too strong. Yeah, I think it will be way too strong. A lot of battling happening here. They took down the Ember in the top lane, surprising Scottylicious in the easy camp, and also killing Hated on the other side of the river. On Fnatic's side of the map as well. They're 3k ahead here at the Dyer's first 12 minutes. Is under attack. Gotcha! Radiant's bottom yeah, tower is under attack. They'll take down the, uh, the top tier one. I think the, uh, the lineup of Fnatic, this is how they work. Classic uh, zoo lineup. You know, this is not a classic zoo hero, but this is the way that you play. Pretty much like a Beastmaster, you stay on the top lane forever, and then there's constantly going to be rotations to work. Monkey King is pretty much self-sufficient and can escape, and you have the Enchantress to be in, in places yeah. where you want to be in. Again, he's gonna pop his heels, but just not enough against the Laguna Blade. Speared onto the wall of the Colosseum. Juno is gonna be the uh, Radiance bottom the sacrificial lamb in this game. You're, you're just gonna be running towards the enemies in areas that you expect the anatomic to be. And then when they're not there, that's where the Monkey King plays a bit more defensively. And you continue to do this until Gabby says, okay, it's time for us to win this game. Anatomic able to take the bottom tier one, but their mid tier tower is in peril decide to defend it. it is falling too fast completely taken away as well scotty licious though and with gabby gabby gets the stun from boundless and dj to pulverize finish him off beautiful lucify steals the pulverize and kills the primal beast with it now he has to survive against gabby and kp but also armel wants a piece of that wash buckles him too Man, sword slashes and a few pistol shots Rubik looks like a scrawny guy and then he picks up this beast and smashes 
Dyer's looks can be uh, can be deceitful for sure. Are you watching? I'm, I'm he doesn't need his hands for it. I mean, uh, but he uses does use, but he uses his magical hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm looking at Neon Atomic, what they need to do, how they need to. Every single time Enchantress shows on the map, you run in, you kill her, and then you smoke to the other part of the map. You rinse and repeat that. Um, Mars is close to the blink dagger, so you just oh. have to do it with multiple. That's not a, that's not a successful Wukong's KP. A bit too late with the, the bird mini stuns there. Weren't able to lock Radiant down the Ember Spirit and blow him up. He had a remnant already inside the tree line, so he slates and jumps away. No ulti for the Monkey King. It's not the biggest ability baited out, but <laughs> still an ultimate on cooldown. It's a fairly long one as well. Poor Seri looking. Not having fun. That's his first death, but he's also under farmed. Every single time. Warmel. Just extend a bit too far. They have a sentry down the ground. Nice disarm. But it's not gonna help, as JG also wants some of that. <laughs> Take down Armel. Lena, the highest net worth hero on Atomic. But still, Neon Atomic are sandwiched. Look at them. They're just surrounded from all sides because they're not... I'm, I'm just not seeing them getting any key kills in this game. And they are trying to get towards BKB, sure. Lena now, she is strong, but you need to find the way to make it work. At least more aggressive positioning with Lena on the bottom lane, at least, would make sense for uh, for the rest of the team to have any kind of chance. Gabby is also Dyer's looking pretty scary attack. on this Monkey Some King. Of corrosion, Echo Saber. He's got a lot of attack speed. He can build up those Jingu stacks super fast. And his Boundless Strike, level 4, hits hard. The level difference so between the MK and the Mars is also four levels. How does Seri get back in this game? We're gonna have to talk about it. Uh, nah, this is, this is just what's gonna happen every single time. You're not even gonna catch the monkey. Oh, maybe they do. Gabby is being a bit greedy. He does not get to react fast enough, and he's gonna get stun lock. Mischief available, but he doesn't use it for the Laguna Blade. He doesn't use it at all. He's under attack. Could have maybe dodged the Laguna damage there and allowed Armel to join in. But since that never happens, Armel has no option to just let him fall. Good pick for Atomic, but they're still falling behind every single minute. It feels like the economy is just turning in favor for Fnatic. Gabby yeah, had all, all the info to dodge that. It was his fault. Jingle was on the... Should have been a red flag, but I think he, he got a little bit too relaxed given how... how... So now it's going to take some time for Fnatic to uh, retake the top part of the map. And this is the time for... for the, uh, Back to your question about the Mars, you don't really farm in this. You try to get that blink dagger as fast as you can through kills, through creeps, it doesn't matter. And then you're always around. You need to make sure that. Atomic setting up with three in mid. KP playing it safe. Doesn't want to cross that river, especially if JG's around the area. But uh, you talked about taking the map back in control. DJ, he just goes there. He just... No, he knows he can get out with Onslaught. As long as there's no uh, glimpse going to be uh, popped on top of him. Armel pushing out the top wave. Mid wave has been cleared out. They're moving towards side jungle. KP is like, we could also Roche. They are going to try it. They're getting the best of the Liberty <laughs> the King. And that is a big thing. Even the Lina, you know, as strong as she is currently, especially now with the DD, is in trouble. You get the Wukong Cement plus the Boundless Strike. If she doesn't pop the BKB before, it's just dead. Well, this has been a bit of a slugfest. Up till this point, maybe with that Aegis, we'll see something happen here. Lino with a DD rune trying to keep the midwave pushed in and hit the tier one tower. Could be able to take it out, but Roshan is falling. GG to take it. Gabby secures a second life for himself. Yes. <laughs> they do spot Scotty Licious in the top lane. They've tried this once. They won't get a chance to attempt again. Neon Atomic getting uh, something out of a bad situation. They knew with the mid lane tower being up that there's only one angle that they can approach the Roche pit from. And 
going up against Radiance the Monkey King tower into a uh, the Roche Pit and the Pango, you know that you're gonna lose. So very nice play from them to get that mid lane mid lane tower down. And at least you're setting yourself up for success for maybe the uh, the future. What you find laying around. They're starting to set up something in bottom, but Atomic, they know this is a hard dive. Really not even worth it at all. Armel spotted in mid, Chase coming up. He does get the roll up and the Rolling Thunder off, so he's going to be out of there before the Spear connects. Yep, that, that Arena nice. for 90. Nice fast play from Neon Atomic, but they need to start with the, uh, with the Spear Arena. That's the way that you kill him. As soon as they knew that some of the TPs have been forced to the bottom lane and they knew because of the onslaught usage, they went for a fast play. So very fast play from Neon Atomic, but this time it was actually the execution. Lacking. I feel like Pango roll-up is a bit busted because... Uh, yeah. Instant. It doesn't even take time to form into a bubble like he does with, uh, with the Rolling Thunder. Turns, turns into the rolling form. It does have a cast point, but I, roll up is just instant, so you can always dodge the spear if you're lo if you're fast. I just think you should put that it does not. Uh, you cannot use it when you, and then it. Well, you can even return it to four second duration. It used to be just make sure that if the pango gets rooted, that he can't just use it like a uh, like. Yeah. Oh man, Champ just gonna get caught. Uh, but it also gives information where Atomic is standing at the current time. Static Storm has already been thrown down onto the ground for nothing. Armel, big nuke on Lucify. Forces Atomic away, and that's one ulti, which will open up the top tower for Fnatic to take. Force has a blink, and they're going for a smoke. They understand they shouldn't get this one for free. They're getting there in good timing. Gabby, though, that. Awesome position to get a big move on. Yep, and he just broke two smokes too. Vision coming out. LSA is under the tower. They're gonna dive. This the rolling thunder. Wukong's on the arena. He's gonna be placed down. The Wukong's actually never goes off. And that AJS is gonna be blowing up. They got the Luguna Blade to poke onto Armel. The BKB is running out on Lina Januel. Look at this enchantress. Giga chat mode on the front line. No care, no fear, no worries about the world. And trades off hated. Armel diving and forcing them all the way behind the tier three towers. Cuts down the tree from Gabby so he won't get the instant ulti off. And the boundless strike still held intact. Siri with the spear, Armel already out of there. The chains onto DJ. DJ in trouble. Can they save the primal beast? He is using the uproar, and he will take a left bit of less damage. KP at the front line. We've got beautiful from Gabby. Both GJ, JG, and the Ember from Scotty down and Lucify. What a beautiful land there from Gabby. Atomic got a bit frustrated that we're just taking a beating. Can we fight back? Okay, let's go. We got the chains on one guy. Everyone gets excited. And then Gabby turns it around. Seri's gonna go down as well. That's the fourth kill for him. It's not an ultra, but it is a four for him. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fnatic just outplayed him so much from start to finish of that fight. Arena comes out, Gabby comes down from the tree. Doesn't matter, he still dies. But it's an Aegis. Joel sees the Laguna Blade being used. He goes forward. He knows that he can't die. And Fnatic are constantly going back and forth, baiting, baiting Neon Atomic to come out of their base. Come on, come on, do it. They're diving with heroes that they know have the mobility to come out. And the Monkey King is just waiting, waiting, waiting for his opportunity. He has been doing that for like 15 seconds there, waiting for an opportunity for Neon Atomic to come out. And the second they do, he's there. Double bound strike. That was, that was just beautiful execution for from every single individual coming out from uh, from Fnatic. And then the way that they set it up as a team, it is just on another. This is a beautiful way. If this is the way that they're going to be communicating when it comes to uh, the start of the DC, they're going to have a good season. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They are, they're in shambles after that last fight. A lane of racks down. And another possibility of uh, getting a draw. It's starting to diminish. It's starting to drop. Down to 3% probability. It's better than 2. It's better than 1. But it's not good in any, any statistic, any standards. Fnatic looking for another fight. Atomic holding the triangle position. They're still a bit spread. No Rubik. They might get caught here. Scotty Lish is going to get caught in the stun. Blown up at the start. And Seri has no friends. That's not fair. As long as we stay you positive, we'll win.
Maybe, maybe he'll find some in They the left them. They left he'll, them. He needs better friends. <laughs> the right put it, but yeah, not nothing that or the more. Atomic do Radiant there. Scanning. Right now with a 14k gold lead, the Atomic, even if they would get a perfect initiation, I don't know Dyer's if they would. The Monkey Something King has to die instantly, but he has has a lot of HP, and now the BKB is there. Dyer's I mean, if you're Neon Atomic, you're going for the plays now. Once Monkey King gets a stat item right now, which is going to be a Scotty, the game ends. At that point, it is over. So it's now or never. You go for those fights in the tier two. You cannot let it. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. JG is still too far away from those big, uh, big hitting items. The Crystalis would be one. The Silver Edge would be even better against the Monkey King. And Rolling Thunder loaded up by Arnold. They're gonna go. Sari gets the arena down. They're gonna cut the Monkey King down the tree. Does he die before the BKB? It doesn't look like it. He's gonna turn it around. Maybe. No, he's gonna fall. Aiden is down as well. Buyback from the Disruptor. Ember Spirit dying in the front line. Still gets killed by one of the Impetus Spears. Fanatics DJ in the front. Already uses BKB. He's gonna get glimpsed into the Static Storm from Hayden. Sari is gonna Get targeted by Armel, but the spear comes out. They're gonna force that pango away. Let's say stun connects onto KP. Remember, KP is still unkilled this game, and looks like he will keep his life intact for a little bit longer. 4012. Three heroes down from Atomic. One of them being a dieback. It's just down to JG and Sari. Okay, now it's officially. You killed the monkey. You got the perfect initiation. You couldn't do it fast enough, so that you don't. Yeah, that's a... You have no more. Plays. Yeah, we to. Now it's just down to one. Lucify respawning. JJ will find the kill on DJ, but Janual, look at this Enchantress. No fear anymore in the world. Feels like this Ent is stronger than any other hero on the side of Atomic, and that is a support. AP does get the shard off just in time. He's healing up in front of the fountain. Lucify, no lift available. SA Sun is there, and Scotty Lynch is slowly burning it down, and KP, his clean sheet is gone. I mean, uh, diving the uh, the fountain 25 minutes in tends to do that. Yeah. Well, that was a nice crit <laughs> from uh, Delina. The, not gonna be enough. Oh, they can actually turn on Delina because the Monkey King is back. Gabby was dead, but I think uh, Neon Atomic got used to that. Okay, JG, nice moving. <laughs> Should be fine. Hate it once the D ward. Surprise! Connected on both of them. He's gonna jump the Rubik's roll, but BKB, he wanted that kill. Sari moving in, JG. He's got the stun, but already moving into the another tree. Bit slow there with uh, with the LSA, but it's it's down to reaction time. You've only got mere seconds. Decide what you want to do. <laughs> Neon Atomic didn't even deward their base. They are allowing these words to persist, and that is pretty much what killed their disruptor and almost their Rubik as well. And they still don't know because you could just say, okay, the Monkey King was in the vicinity. It's not like he was uh, really waiting, disruptor, but it was the case. I really hope that they take this down because it just makes it even even tougher for them. 16k lead. Unlosable? Yeah. Feels yeah. like it. This point it is. Monkey King is gonna have that. Tell me your name again, Monkey Man. You want to fight outside of the base, it has to be with smoke into an area that's heavily controlled. And they under war. It's right now. But I guess this was expected as well. Now, all they need to do is uh, see the first person to smoke their. Uh, smoke their pop, pop, <laughs> pop their smoke. <laughs> And that's all they need. And KP's already scouting ahead with an Agonims. He's gonna be the one to initiate it on first. And he is silenced. He will die. But the rest of Fnatic now gonna be closing up. They need to win this fight, though. Armel is stuck. Delicious, surviving with a BKB, getting to jump away. Sari not gonna be as lucky. He is down. The Rubik also getting caught in the pulverize from DJ. And it is the Sproink. Uh, apologize for the voice crack there. Uh, to grab the double kill. Now it's my turn. <laughs> you laugh at me. And you didn't even laugh at me. But uh, we have Sari buying back. Armel roll up. Not just the, uh, the bonk at least, but the spear never goes through. Armel dead, however. In that previous for fight, Gabby, Gabby couldn't kill the MS. JG. Charge from DJ, he's got pulverized. They could grab the Lina, hold her in place. Enchantress getting rooted up. They just need to get closer to the Lina, and they will. Gabby just slapped down with that big bat. Yeah, 
Oh, so many of spears flying in. Daniel, the true carry for Fnatic. Do you believe in the uh, core enchantress, though? Uh, no. <laughs> it's still not going to change my mind because, uh, well, I, I mean, technically, if the support turns into a core, you already got the cores, and that's what I—that's the thing I was. That's the thing that I needed. That's the thing that I they did not have. It was just uh, enchant stealing damage. So, yeah. My PTSD, so the core enchantress still remain. However, two man stolen stunned by Lucify, only to slow them down just a little bit. They're going to continue with the push, and that's going to be Mega Creeps. Gabby looking for Sari and anybody he can actually grab, dodging the first ability, but this, uh, the arena placed down. No follow up, no damage. They have all the control they need, but they have no damage to kill this. Glimpse does. Glimps works. Gabby down. Lose a fly getting charged by DJ. BKB still up for a couple seconds. Scotty Lish is trying to fight life here, but KP and the birds. The birds are being a nuisance here for the Ember Spare. But they had JG coming in for the back. Still an attempt on a fight. If they can hold. If they can hold. But the Enchantress is too strong. He's out of mana. He's gonna buy more mangoes, I think. Yep, he's spamming mangoes into his inventory right now. Pango in front of the fountain. Holding roll up, place down. Tries to move away from the Lina Lina. will get the kill in Fnatic. That's the second time they're diving the fountain and losing members, but it's the Enchantress. The raid boss is still there. KP to join in. Oh, Lina almost dies, but the mana runs out once again. <laughs> luckily, luckily, there's the Mullet God. <laughs> Mullet God without the mana to fight back, and they finally get him. Scotty Licious gets himself 800 gold. They see KP. They don't see KP. They miss the dust. He's hiding in the boot. The corners, the darkest corners of this dire base. <laughs> uh, usually where the grave keepers are. Um, the only reason that the Rubik survived there is because he stole the grave keepers. So it's not a spell that you can usually steal, but because KP has a shard, it does, uh, it does get stolen by the Rubik. And then he survives the enchantress because the impetuses don't really do anything to them. KP tried to uh, ambush the Ember Spirit, but uh, the moment he spawns his birds to get the buff as well from the Silence of Silence of the Grave, or Silence as the Grave, uh, he also sees the Ember goes for the Slate of Fists, so could not get a stun follow-up to get the uh, DJ Primal Beast closer. Otherwise, they might, might have been able to kill him. Hate it, though. That's an easy one if the birds could only get past a net that's on the ground, so uh, unable to fly above it. DJ kills him with the charge own slot and the pulverize to follow. Lena has BKB, but she's just gonna walk away. Rubik has the pulverize. He's gonna show us the uh, how strong magic the hands are once again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gonna have to wait a bit longer for that. Armel Gabby finishing off Roche. Scared his magic hands are gonna be broken now. Maybe from just one bundle strike from the uh, from the Monkey King. We did already saw some uh, one shots from the Tusk today on some Maranas. Plus, if I wouldn't be the first one. Do you have any smokes? Middle tower is under attack. No, smokes are out of stock, and I don't think anybody's carrying on to one either. Lena has a rapier. Is oh. Let's, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. They already scouted her out as well. They see the rapier and Lina and Januel charging on Ada to the back line. Lose a fight to fall. Sari getting stunned up. Ember trying to help them out, but Lina's not even getting the right click anyone. She's so scared for the rapier. She doesn't even get to use it at all. Back to the fountain once again with Luna going to play, but it's not going to be enough. Bumps the BKB. And there's so many targets focusing on Lina right now. Spear onto KP. Pops the shard. And he's going to get hit by that fountain very, very soon. He has a go scepter. He's immune for the time being. Lena dying. Rapier down. Gabby wants it. Gabby takes it. And his Aegis will pop Sari down. And GG called. But does he get to keep the Rapier, Gabby? Yeah, he bought his own Sigo Scepter. <laughs> Jono jumped from in like, I'm gonna thank it for your uh, for Rapier. But Gabby didn't communicate it throughout the ghost. Yeah. Um, good Rapier. Good Rapier. He got like three hits in in that fight. So uh, definitely.